fly away together. Into the forever. And beautiful sky. I want to go ahead and I want to move on to the first big part of uh, my stream. And that is my review for Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 3. Uh, and again, like I said before, uh, this is a non-spoiler review. The movie literally just came out last night. I don't want to ruin this movie for a lot of people, especially because, you know, uh, this is the, the, the last time that James Gunn is going to probably direct a Guardians uh, movie or be involved in any M M MCU material in the future. So, you know, people are obviously excited, chat. So, please, no spoilers in the chat. But, for those that don't know, kind of the general premise of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, uh, after a brutal attack against uh, Rocket that puts his life at risk, uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy confront a cruel and genocidal villain while Rocket's mysterious and tragic past is, you know, revealed. And before kind of going into my overall thoughts on uh, this specific movie, I do want to talk about just my overall thoughts on The Guardians of the Galaxy, you know, the, the first two films and, you know, their other appearances in the MCU. As I've said recently on, you know, uh, my most recent spoiler review for Volume 1 and talk about it on my other platforms, Discord Discourse, um, you know, I was very unfamiliar with Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, I, I, I knew practically nothing about the characters from the comics. Uh, all I knew is that there was a talking raccoon named Rocket, and there was a tree guy that said three words. And that, that was really it, right? And I just didn't know about Star-Lord or Gamora or Drax, any of these other characters. And so, you know, when it was announced that Marvel was going to do a Guardians of the Galaxy movie, I was like, what the hell is this? I don't, I don't, I don't know about this. I was very unsure. And then they said they're going to bring in James Gunn, and James Gunn, who I was, you know, at, at, at the time, I was like, well, you know, I really like, you know, uh, uh, um, a Slither. Really enjoyed Slither, Chad. Great uh, body horror sci-fi film, right? Uh, Nathan Fillion, Michael Rooker, a number of other character actors. But then he also did Super, right, which is this very, very dark and disturbing uh, superhero comedy, which I'm not particularly too fond of. And, of course, you know, he worked on uh, numerous other films with, you know, Lloyd Kaufman. Uh, but you know, I was I just wasn't sure. But then you know, we started seeing all these these trailers, you know, for the for the first movie, and I was like, okay, it's cool. He was very smart to incorporate uh, music, because uh, you know, you know, hits from the you know sixties, the seventies, and the eighties, and I feel like that charmed a lot of people to the Guardians before they even saw them, and it worked. And that you know, that's always been a thing that's been a part of all of the the Guardians movies and the, the, the other films that they've appeared in, including in Infinity War and Endgame. And even Love and Thunder. Uh, and, you know, I, I went in. And the thing is, like, I still, had, I still had some doubts. Like, I'll admit it. I had doubts. I was like, I'm not sure. I was coming off of the high of Captain America, the Winter Soldier, which to this day is still my favorite uh, MCU movies, one of my favorite comic book films of all time. Just, it's just a great spy thrill. That's when they really started to incorporate different genres. But then, you know, listen, after seeing the first Guardians, uh, I, I, I really enjoyed it. Hell, I probably uh, uh, loved it, Chad. Still do love it. You know, I thought it was great. I loved all these different characters. You know, I mean, there's a lot of people you're, you're working with, a lot of moving parts. But, you know, I think James Gunn, for the most part, he, he absolutely uh, nailed it. Like, really, my only criticism of the first movie, as I said during my spoiler review, is that, you know, Ronan was a weak villain. Not Lee Pace's fault. Apparently, a lot of stuff was cut out from that film in regards to, like, his character. But outside of him, the movie was, was, was great. Really enjoyed it. One of the, the best of the MCU, if you know, if not, you know, top five, definitely top ten for me. Uh, and then we got the sequel, Guardians 2, which, you know, at that point I was very excited. And I have to admit, I was a little let down. I was disappointed by that movie. I don't think everything worked. Um, it just felt like there was an, an, an imbalance. You know, I loved all the, I thought they, the, the thing that Gunn improved on with the sequel was the villain. Kurt Russell as ego and changing Peter Quill's origin story. All that really worked for me. You know, I, I mean, to this day, I love referencing that scene. Ah, uh, you know, I loved your mother. It was a shame I, I went ahead and just put that tumor in her, in, in her brain. And he's like, what? And I just love that. I thought he was great. But then there's a lot of stuff. And I, I, I did like the stuff with, with Yondu and him being really the, the, the true daddy, if you will to um to star lord to peter quill but then there was like the stuff with rocket didn't work for me i hated the taser stuff uh taser face stuff that just really some of the humor i think that's for a lot of people i've talked about this before you know humor subjective but if there's like a 
humor in the movie and it's just not clicking with you, then you're not you're not gonna have a fun time. And a lot of the humor in in Guardians Two didn't really work for me. I don't think it's a terrible movie, you know, but it's it's not one of my favorite Marvel films. But it does do uh, uh, a number of things really well, and that's what also we got. We, we had the start of like you know Nebula's arc and and you know she became. Uh, more than just a, I will destroy you, sister. You know, there's there's more to it. So you know, I, I like I appreciate it for that. And then, of course, we had the Guardians appearances in in Infinity War and Endgame, and you know, pairing them with uh, with Thor was so fun. And and then you know, Spider Man and Tony Stark, like all those, is like, oh wow, he's, these two super teams interacting with with each other. It, it's it, it was great. It was really really amusing and, and fun. And then in into Endgame, where it's kind of it's weird when you think about it. You like the only, the really, truly, the only two surviving members of the Guardians uh, at that point in Endgame is is Rocket and Nebula, and you know they show this responsibility, and we and we spend so much time with them as not Guardians of the Galaxy, but as Avengers, and I really, really like that. And then you know I think there was a lost opportunity to do stuff with them in Thor: Love and Thunder. I would have liked to have seen more of them. It was cool to see them in the beginning and things. And I've always liked Star Lord and Thor's uh, 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 you know relationship, their back and forth, their rivalry. I wish they did more of that. That would have been fun. But I still like their appearance in that. And so that's what brings us uh, here to um, to Guardians Three chat. And listen, going into this movie, I had, I had pretty high expectations. Uh, like I said, despite not being the uh, the biggest fan of Guardians Two, you know I've liked a lot of what James Gunn brought to the MCU, his sensibilities, and you know this this film chat pretty much, as far as I know, it, this is his final contribution to to the MCU to Marvel. And so I expected a lot with this with this final film, you know, focusing on this iteration of of the Guardians, along with just you know revealing you know Rocket's past, uh, which has always been like I think a, like a mystery. It was always like you know touched on, uh, and whether it be the first Guardians movie or even all the way up to um, Endgame, and uh, you know thankfully uh, I can safely say that uh, Gunn, uh, the the other filmmakers. And, and most of the cast uh, deliver a really emotional, uh, surprisingly dark, and a very satisfying finale to this series of films, at least for right now. You know, those who haven't liked uh, a lot of the multiverse-centric MCU films, you know, everything from Phase 4 and leading into, like, Phase 5, I think they will probably find that this movie is really, really refreshing. You know, outside of, like, occasionally talking about the events of Infinity War and Endgame, which do feel necessary, you know, uh, for, for, this, for, this, for this particular uh, film, this, this is very much just focused on the Guardians and their respective supporting characters. It's really focused on them being a family, uh, trying to take care of each other, and just building pretty much like a, like a safe haven. Uh, for all of their friends and additional uh, family members, like it's it's very much a standalone film. You know, it's like, hey, we're not we're not interested in building towards uh, an Avengers movie. We're not interested in building towards something like Kane. So, like that that's not talked about at all. That's not in here. They don't reference that. You know, right? This this is this is just focusing on the team and in uh, one particular team member. Um, in this case. Uh, and I think that was very, very smart, especially for people that I think sometimes feel like confused or lost or frustrated that some of these Marvel movies, uh, they, they're, they're just set up for, for more setup. <laughs> you know, that can be, that can get annoying. That's getting frustrating. And that movie, I think, avoids that. It, it totally does. You know, there's nothing where it's like, well, yep, see that thing that we just brought up? Well, we're not going to talk about that. That'll be in the next movie. And you got to see those things. Like, no, they don't, none of that's there, which I think was very smart. And, I, you know, it, it, I, it, it, it works very well for the movie. You know, at the emotional center of this film is, is Rocket. And, of course, you know, uh, voiced by Bradley Cooper, mocap by, you know, Sean Gunn. You know, while the past two Guardian films, you know, were focused on Peter Quill, on, you know, on Star-Lord, uh, Chris Pratt's character, this is very much Rocket's story. You know, we learn more about his past and, you know, just how traumatic tragic and really just downright disturbing it is uh cooper listen i've always been a big bradley cooper fan you know both for his comedic work his dramatic work like silver lines playbook is like one of my favorite films of the previous decade chats easily in my top 10 you know uh and so i've always uh liked him and i've, I've always liked his voice acting for for rocky he does a really good job cooper gives a hell of a performance 
And it feels like a nice continuation of just like the rocket we see in, in Endgame, you know? He, he's, he's really not like wisecracking, you know, as, as jokey or being just mean for the sake of it, you know, in this movie. There's like a little bit of that, but like, we, we, he's, he's just, he seems to be at a point in his life where he's, he's more relaxed, he's calmer, but he's still dealing with like this trauma, but he's being like an adult about it, you know? He's not being immature, and I really, really like that. Um, and the thing is, like, we see a lot of different moments in Rocket's life, you know, especially uh, with his, you know, original group of, um, of friends, these other animals that were experimented on by the film's, you know, villain, the High Evolutionary, those, those characters being um, Lila, uh, Teeth, <laughs> this walrus, and a floor, <laughs> this this little bunny rabbit. Um, those are some of my favorite scenes in the uh, movie, and it they they are the most unlike anything else that we've seen from the Guardians of the Galaxy, like the previous movies or even Infinity War and Endgame. Like I can almost see like a lot of those scenes being a turnoff for people because it's not like hey happy go lucky and we're blasting people and we have you know we have a wisecrack and we're seeing this spectacular like beautiful just menagerie of of, of color. Not here. There you get that in the movie. Don't worry, you do. But when we're focusing a lot on Rocket's story, it it is it is nasty. It is brutal. It's it's tragic. And you know I can I can understand if that could be a turnoff to some people who are just not used to that having watched all the other Guardians of the Galaxy adventures and other adventures that they've been featured in you know that let's like I said that this movie is is very dark and probably I don't know one of the most disturbing MCU movies uh it, it has humor but it's not as concerned with that which I think a lot of people will probably appreciate if someone a lot of people have been saying like I'm sick of the MCU's humor it's like let's get serious let's just focus on that I think this that 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 this answers that problem that you might have. You know, there's stuff in here that is going to disturb people and it's violent and most of that violence is centered around animal cruelty. You know, some people <sighs> might not like that, uh but I I personally felt it it was necessary for the story uh that James Gunn wanted to tell. Like it didn't it didn't feel cuz I feel like, you know, you know, James Gunn, and I think I think it's true. He he has a bit of a mean spirited uhness to some of his his films and his characters and moments and and humor. And he can be, you know, I mean, I think he's a pro provocateur, you know, especially when he was, you know, younger and got him in the trouble. Even though I don't think he deserved the punishment that he got. I think that was ridiculous. But that's always been a part of him. I don't feel like, because some people, because I've been reading, because I, I wanted to look, okay, this is how I feel about the movie. I want to read what other people have been saying about this film. And a lot of people are saying like, oh, he's just doing this just to get a a, a reaction of people. I was like, I don't feel that way at all. Like, I, like there's, there's some things that I'm critical of, and I'm going to get to those. But the one thing that I would push back on people to say like, he's just doing this to like exploitive, like against animals, I think that's ridiculous. I don't think that's a legitimate criticism. I think, I mean, listen, if it affects you, if you, if, if you find that disturbing, I think mean, that's the point. I think as the viewer, it's like, that is the, that is the point you're supposed to be like disgusted by it you know but I didn't feel like it was exploitive I didn't feel like it, it wasn't earned I thought it was was earned and I thought it does a great job and provides it provides just so much context to you know rocket you know which again which, which has always been been hinted at um the other part of the film you know that I really like is that it's just it just it just really wants to focus on fulfilling character arcs and I think for the most part, it succeeds very well. You know, uh, like specifically talking about like Star-Lord, you know, Peter Quill, which, you know, he's been the, the central character of the previous two Guardians movies. And, you know, because of the events of Infinity War and Endgame, he's not in a really good place in his life right now. You know, he's an alcoholic. Uh, he's, he's not the leader. He, he probably like needs to be. Um, because of everything that happened with G Gamora, the, 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 the original Gamora. You know, because we do have another Gamora in this film, but she is very different from the Gamora that 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 we've seen in the past. And he has to work through that in the film, and it's a really it's a big struggle for him because he's like, this is just she's she's here, it's the person I've always known, but it's not the person he knows. 
Uh, and I think Chris Pratt delivers that, like that confusion and that sadness. This is not really the quippy, you know, smarmy, sarcastic star. This is a guy that's like, I'm just kind of, I'm done. All right. I'm done being, I don't want to be that person anymore. And like, there's a great interaction in the movie between him and the high revolutionary. He's like, I don't want to fucking hear it from you. All right. I'm done. All right. Stop it. And I like that. I really like that for his character. Like, he, he's really grown. And he's, in, you know, he, he's grown, but he's dealing with, with trauma. Everyone's dealing with respective trauma. And uh, he has to work through it. And the way in which he works through it throughout the rest of the movie, because I thought, listen, I'll tell you right now, I'm not giving any spoilers, but I was very concerned before going in to see this that they were going to do, like, the easy way out with the whole Star-Lord and Gamora thing, you know, that relationship. And I am so glad. I'm so glad they don't do it. And I was like, that, that, thank you. Thank you. It felt like a very mature. He matures, right? This is what we all want our characters to do. They want to mature. You don't want them to regress. And he was great. Even though he's not the focus of the movie, he's not the main focus. It's Rocket. I liked what they did with him. You know, it was a nice continuation of, of, of his story from all the previous films, despite not being the, the, the main character. So how that resolved itself, I thought, was, was very good. Very good uh, with um, with Gamora. That's all I'll say on that. Uh, Neb- Nebula, listen, Karen Gillan, she has grown into like one of my favorite characters in the Guardians movies. This one got one of my one of my favorite Marvel characters, which is so funny because again, when we first introduced her in the original film, she's like, "Ronan, I'll I'll help you destroy the planet and kill my father," like all that. And I just love how she has grown. Like she feels. She's, she's a family member. She's a family member. Uh, a, 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 she's grown into her leadership role and picking up the slack, you know, from, from Starload, who is dealing with, you know, the, the loss of Gamora. They're, they have some of the best. And by the way, uh, uh, Chris Pratt and Karen Gillan have some of the bre- best interactions uh, in this film. I, I love their chemistry. But both, uh, like, funny stuff. Uh, just they're, they're, they're back and forth, but then also the more of the emotional moments, uh, between the two of them. I just, I just, I just really like her arc in this, in this movie is fully realized. And I don't want to say too much what, what happens in regards to her, but she nails every scene she's in. She's very funny, but at the same time, she's, she's more sensitive. She's still working on herself and still doing with her trauma, but yeah, she's, she's great. She's really, really good. And uh, probably, you know, God, uh, I mean, that'd be my probably my top three favorite characters in this in this film. It's it's Rocket and 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 Star Lord, and then um, and then Nebula. I just really like their three of their stories and how they they wrapped up what they were all going through. And then we have Drax and Mantis. You know, Dr- they've always been paired with each other um, since Guardians uh, Two. You know, and Dave Batista and uh, Pom- I'm always I'm always gonna mispronounce her name, and I feel so bad. Pom. Clementif, is that how you say her name? They they're great. They are straight up just a brother sister dynamic, and they're and they're very funny. You know, we 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 know more about Mantis now because of the holiday special and and her connection with with Quill, which they share through uh, ego, and they definitely lean into that more in this movie. And I really like that. That was great. But just just you know, Drax and Mantis and their 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 whole dynamic is is just a whole nother subplot, just a uh, filled with. Uh, uh, comedic and, and emotional uh, moments. They're 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 a riot in this film, and I really like them a lot. Uh, I mean, in terms of like the, the 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 central team, like Groot. Groot's the only one who he, I mean, he it's not like he's bad or anything like that, but he's just kind of there, <laughs> you know. I mean, I feel like they've done a lot of great things with Groot throughout the entire franchise. Again, he's never been the main character, but he's had some amazing moments. Obviously, in the original film, you know, we are Groot. Um, and then, you know, being so cute and adorable as baby Groot and Guardians 2 and, you know, being, you know, sassy teenage Groot, uh, in Infinity War, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's kind of just, you know, he's definitely matured. He's the 20 something. He's the young 20 something that, that is just really concerned about his dad rocket and, you know, wants to, uh, he always has his brother pretty much. Like I also, I just noticed like Star-Lord and Groot like have this really brother relationship. I thought was adorable. Like Groot's very much the little brother and, and Peter is very much the, uh, the big brother. I thought it was great, but I mean, you know, that, that's really it. That's the extent of him. Not bad, but it, 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 it works. It works. And then you have some of the more, uh, like they're a part of the guardians, I suppose, but they're definitely, you know, more supporting tertiary roles. Obviously, Craglin played by Sean Gunn and uh, Maria uh, Baklova, 
who you guys probably best know for playing uh, Borat's daughter in the Borat sequel. But she was great and loved her. Uh, they're they're very good in this movie. They they have their moments. I would have liked more of Cosmo, honestly. But I, I like their back and forth. I like their chemistry. It's they're they're, they're, they're good. I, I want to see more of them, honestly. Um, and then you listen on a technical level, uh, the production design. I mean, it's gorgeous. I mean, we go to we go to. I mean, of course, we're on Nowhere, and I like how, like, we see throughout the film that Nowhere is changing. It's not like this hive of scum and villainy. It's really being turned into, like, a safe haven for all sorts of people that were affected, you know, due to the events of Infinity War and Endgame. And, you know, they're, they're, it's a community that looks, looks out for each other. I thought that was really sweet. And, uh, I mean, the action, choreography, oh, that's great. There's not a, there's not a single action moment where it, 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 came off like inauthentic or was was poorly shot or filmed or choreographed but I, I liked all the action in this movie and it's a, it's a nice blend of um cgi and and practical uh effects and i think james gunn's always been pretty good about that blending cgi and practical he just has an eye for it you know the practical stuff looks great it's gross Some, sometimes it's extraordinarily gross a lot of just great makeup and mask and things and there's like some really disgusting abomination creatures in this movie Again, like I'm, I'm a bit of a sucker for body horror chat, and to see some of these hell spawn as they call them, uh, really creepy, really gross. I really like that, and the CGI is also quite good. Uh, now you know, listen, I've been praising this movie, and there's a lot to praise, and it deserves it. I do have some negatives though, and uh, you know, notice I, I haven't mentioned a, a couple members of the cast, and you know, one of the the big new additions to uh, the MCU, to the Guardians franchise, what have you, is, you know, Will Poulter as, you know, Adam Warlock. And listen, Will Poulter is a very talented, um, you know, actor. He's been in a lot of great things. And I think he has dramatic chops, comedic chops. And, you know, when he was cast as uh, Adam Warlock, I was like, ah, sure, why not? I'm sure he'll be cool. Um, you know, Adam Warlock in the comics has, you know, always been kind of this, I mean, he's always been like one of the arch nemesis of, nemesi, I guess, of, of Thanos, right? He had a whole huge role in in like you know the infinity gauntlet saga and things and obviously he was not in those those movies though right and he's brought in here and to be honest he just he's kind of an afterthought really it's like he doesn't so there's like holdovers from guardians too like remember the stuff with the sovereign those yellow the gold people right and like he was the one that was cooking in the cocoon there's a reveal of like what the sovereign really are. It's like, oh, okay. It's like, okay. And then it kind of connects. But it feels, it almost feels like, oh, yeah, we got to bring them back. We got to bring Adam Warlock in, I guess. Uh, have that connect to this new thing we have. And it's like, okay. Kind of comes out of nowhere, really. It's like, just, I was like, mm. kind of just dumb with like, oh, just like a, a line, a sentence. And I was like, we just got to go with it. And the thing is with him, he's pretty much just another Drax, you know? Uh,. He's just on, as people have been saying, it's true. He's, a, he's kind of like a big, dumb baby. He's like, you know, not even a baby. He's more, he's more like a, a teenager, you know, or a preteen that doesn't understand and he can't pay attention. He has, he has ADD. He has ADHD. <laughs> he doesn't know what to do. And he's kind of overcompensating for some things. Uh, it's like, it's funny, but at the end of the day, he, he doesn't really need to be there. All the stuff of the Sovereign, you could take out of the movie and aside from, like, one moment towards the end of the film where it's like, well, there you go. Yeah, that's, that's why he's here. It's just like, eh. It just, he, he doesn't feel necessary. Um, that, that, I think that's going to be the one thing people are going to criticize the most of this movie. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think they, they, they handled Adam Warlock all that well. But thankfully, I guess for the most part, he's not really in most of the movie. Like, honestly, when he comes in, it's like, oh, I forgot you were here. <laughs> he comes back you know he, he pops up occasionally it's not consistent it's like oh yeah i, for, I forgot you're in here sure <laughs> him and his mom i was like all right whatever and um yeah just that all that and that that was like a holdover from guardians too which i wasn't really crazy about everything with the sovereigns either you know i was like eh, okay um and the other thing so this is the other character and i know a lot of people not even been hating i feel like people have been really mixed on on this which is the villain the High Evolutionary, played by, I'm, 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 apologies if I'm mispronouncing this name, Chuck Woody Uwuji, is that how you say his name? Who, you know, he's popped in other things. He was previously in um, another James Gunn project, Peacemaker. He was great in that. Um, so, it, the whole thing with the High Evolutionary, this is like, this, this is a, he's, he's a megalomaniac that is absolutely obsessed with creating the perfect society. Like, that is his mission in life. And, 
you know, he has a huge connection to Rocket. He's responsible for basically why Rocket is the way he is. And, you know, I like all that stuff with, with Rocket. And I, I can understand what, what James Gunn was trying to do with this guy. You know, because the big the big problem that I have, I think, and I think a lot of people also have this problem, is that he fucking yells a lot. <laughs> and he starts out, he starts out, uh, like, I think doing a, a great job. And you can tell this guy is so self-absorbed, so incredibly narcissistic um, and, and dismissive of everything. And, I mean, you know, he's a he's a, he's, he's a genocidal maniac. And um, I like that aspect of his character how he doesn't even realize, like, what he really is. Like, he's a guy that thinks he's the smartest person in the room, when he's actually kind of probably not, and he obsesses over that fact, and I think he makes up for it. Like, he can't, he thinks he, like, he's the most civilized being, but when anyone questions him, or when that facade falls, and it's often, he fucking freaks, right? And so I can kind of understand what James Gunn was doing. He was, like, saying, like, I, like you know, we, we, we know people like this in our, in our lives. You know, these narcissistic, self-absorbed uh, individuals who don't see every, everyone that they're, they're hurting. It's like, I, I totally see what he's doing. And they fucking break from the littlest thing. They snap at the, at the littlest thing, right? The little slight. And so that's why he's so loud. I feel like he just does it too much. If they, like, cut back on, like, 50%, 50%, like, half of it, and then I think it, it, it would be better, you know? Because they do a lot of great things with him, and I like his interactions, especially with, you know, with Rocket, who he has, you know, the, those big connections with. And, I mean, the guy, the, the, what he does is incredibly monstrous in this movie. Like, you hate him. You despise him. And you're supposed to, and you're and you're supposed to, but it's like he didn't even need to like yell that much. I feel like if had they saved that more towards the end, you know, where he's just suddenly breaking down, and but he always like that would have been I think a little bit better, you know, for me. I think there was like two moments in the movie where he could have lost that composure completely and where he just totally freaks, but because he does it so much, it takes away from some of those moments in which that reaction makes sense for him. Um... So I, I don't I don't think he's terrible at all. I think I, I I like what they what they were trying to do, but I feel like yeah they just pulled back a little bit and didn't make it so over the top so much at an eleven. I think it'll work a, a lot more. But he's still uh, you know he's better than Ronan. <laughs> he's definitely better than Ronan. Not not quite ego though. Not quite ego. You know who you know really captured. See that's the thing of Kurt Russell's performance is ego. That's what I liked about ego because. He, he very similar, to, matter of fact, to the higher, uh, evolutionary, where he, he's this guy who's con- totally consumed by himself and doesn't even realize like what he's doing is even bad because he's so incredibly narcissistic. You know, like, like the line I always love the reference. You know, it's like oh, I loved her. I mean, it was a shame that I had to put that tumor in her head. Like he thinks it's like ah whatever. It's like yeah, you know, easy come, easy go. Like that's that's how ego is. But ego still has those moments in the movie where he fucking freaks, but it happens only a, a handful of times, and his reaction, I feel like, is earned. Where here, it's, it's, it's too much, I think, with the high evolution. Again, not bad. I just, like, if we just kind of, if we just pulled back a little bit. But I still like a lot of the stuff they do with him, especially with Rocket. And there's a great reveal of him, too, later on. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> um, but other than that, other than, you know, like, uh, Adam Warlock, who I do think is the big disappointment in this movie. And again, I don't think it's Will Poulter's fault. I just feel like it's the writing and, and the way in which he was directed. They just didn't really know what to do with this character. And, you know, uh, Chuck Woody Awuji, who I'm, I, 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 do, I did like, but I was kind of mixed on. I just, wish they, I just wish they pulled back. Other than that, I, I do think this is a huge improvement over Guardians 2. Uh, which, which I, which I thought, you know, again, struggled with some of its uh, its subplots, and you know, this film I think delivers, it delivers like a really, it's emotionally yes, but I think it's a bittersweet farewell, uh, to this, to this specific section of Marvel of the MCU, you know, um, and to these characters, and I appreciate James Gunn waiting to go darker, excuse me, wanting, James Gunn wanting to go d- darker and just more introspective, you know, more character focused on this, you know, final MCU film. You know, it does a lot more right than, than, than wrong, which again, the only two things I, that I was mixed on was the two things that, you know, I told you in regards to Warlock and um, High Evolutionary. But other than that, I think it's, I think it's a great film. Um, 
I think for people that were disappointed by Quantum Mania, you're going to be a lot more satisfied with this. Although maybe the darker tone might be a turnoff. I appreciated it. It's again, it's it's a film that's not really it's funny, but it's not worried about being funny. And I kind of like that. It's like let's let's yeah, we, 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 we have jokes. We, sure, 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 sure. But let's 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 focus on this character. Let's be a little more emotional. Let's focus on them as a family. And they really do feel that way, and I liked it. So uh, for me, this is the, the you know in terms of a double toasted rating, I would give this a full price. Um, yeah, I, yeah, definitely a, a, a full price. It could have been a high full price if they just knew what to do with Adam Warlock and, you know, they just pulled back on, on, uh, High Evolutionary. But other than that, I think it's a really good movie. It's a great film and, uh, an excellent entry in the MCU, which, you know, definitely needs, I think for a lot of people that they, they, they need, they need this movie. They need this movie. And, uh, yeah, I'm, it makes me even more excited to see what James Gunn's going to bring to, uh, the DCU. At Warner Brothers chat, I mean, we already know of something like the Suicide Squad, but doing these more emotional stories uh, and this darker material, very curious. And I'm, 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 I'm even after watching this movie, I'm even more excited for his, his Superman film because if he can hit the same emotional moments for Clark and Lois and all those uh, respective characters and Superman's pantheon that he did with these characters the guardians and i'm like oh fuck i can't wait i'm so excited so excited but yeah that's my review for guardians of the galaxy volume three full price really enjoyed it. i thought it was a, a great addition to the mcu and, and it acts as a, as a wonderful finale uh to this iteration of the guardians what about you guys how do you feel about guardians of the galaxy volume three let me know I hope everyone enjoyed the video, and I wanted to take the time to tell you about the movie of the week, a film that I really enjoy and one that I think you will too. This week's movie is the John Wick Trilogy. Just in time for the release of John Wick Chapter 4, the trilogy stars Keanu Reeves and follows a legendary hitman who is forced out of retirement to seek revenge against the men who killed his dog, a final gift from his recently deceased wife. If anyone is interested in purchasing this fantastic film series, please make use of the Amazon affiliate link below in the video description. Your purchase of the film not only earns me a helpful commission, but any purchase you may make after clicking the link itself for 24 hours would help earn me additional commissions as well. Doesn't matter if it's a Blu-ray, a video game, a pair of socks, or a washing machine. Everything within 24 hours of that click can really help the channel. So go ahead and check out the film, enjoy browsing, and enjoy shopping.